gives you the variability of your data set that you have. That it means data is scattered everywhere. <clears throat> and there are the measures of variations are we can use the range, which tells us how far apart the data is. We can use the variance, which normally we don't even interpret because we use the value of the variance to calculate the standard deviation and the standard deviation we can interpret because the, the uh, with the standard deviation formula, it takes back the value into the units of the original X values. Then we can interpret the values. So then we can calculate, yes. Uh, I wanted to ask, mm -hmm. measures of variation, are they the same with measures of dispersion? Yes. Measures of dispersion is the same as measures of spread, measures of variation, uh, variability, measures of dispersion. They mean one and the same thing. They t um, because variation tells you how dispersed your data is away from the mean or how variable it is or how scattered it is around the mean. <clears throat> so we also have coefficient of variation, which we can use to uh, find out the uh, likelihood of uh, the risk, which also tells you the variability of uh, your values as well. Uh, the range, we did cover the range when we did the frequency distribution, when we build in the frequency distribution. So the range is your small, your highest value minus your lowest value. So it means when you calculate the range, you need to order your data from lowest to highest in order for you to know what is your lowest number and what is your highest value. <coughs> and that will tell you the range. The variance, like I said, we don't interpret it, but your variance is your average of your square deviation of values from the mean. It tells you only the, the average, which is your mean um, of your square deviations from your normal mean. And we we'll look at how we calculate the variance. So we can calculate the variance for the sample and we can calculate the variance for the population. When we calculate the variance for the sample, remember with the sample, the statistic, we use normal values that we understand. So with the vari sample variance, uh, we use S squared. And S squared is the sum of your observed value minus the mean squared divided by N minus one. For the population, we use the Greek letters and the parameter is sigma, which is the sum, the population variance, which is the sum of your observed value minus the population mean divided by N. Similar, notice the formula. For the sample, the formula uses N minus one, and for the population, it uses a capital letter N. They look almost exactly the same, but the difference is in the denominator way. It's N minus one and the capital letter N for the population variance. Your standard deviation is the square root of your variance. If we take the variance and we put the square root on it, we will find the population standard deviation, which is your, for your sample variance or your sample standard deviation, it will be the square root of your sample variance, which we use the letter S for the sample standard deviation. And it is the square root of your variance. The same formula, we just put the square root on it. It shows you the variation about the mean. And because we are able to interpret it because we it calculates and converts back the answers to the same unit as the original value. And we will look at um, the, the answers when we calculate this standard deviation. For the population parameter, which is the population standard deviation, is the square root of 
your population variant <clears throat> and we use sigma which is a, a, a symbol that represent the parameter for the population. Let's look at an example of how we calculate the standard deviation. We're not going to look at the variance because the formula of a standard deviation includes the variance. So we just put the square root on top of the variance and that gives us the standard deviation. So let's just look at how we calculate the standard deviation. On Saturday, I can show you how to use your calculators to calculate the standard deviation, which makes it easier. <clears throat> but for now, you need to know how we compute your standard deviation using a formula. So given the sample data, which is 10, 12, 14 up until 24, we can count how many there are. There are eight values within this data set. We can calculate the mean. You know how to calculate the mean, the sum of all the values divided by how many there are. If I add all the values and I divide by eight, I get the mean of 16. That part we've covered in the previous section. I'm not going to go into detail on that. Now, to calculate the standard deviation, remember the formula. The sample standard deviation, because they gave us the sample data, so it means we use the sample standard deviation, not the population standard deviation, the sample standard deviation. We know that it is the square root of the sum of your observation minus the mean, sample mean squared, divided by n minus 1. The formula S is equals to the square root of the sum of your observation, x observation, minus the mean squared divide by n minus 1. That is the formula that we're using. So we know what the values of our x observations are. We can just expand to this because it's a sum. It means adding up. So it means the first observation, we can expand it. The first observation, add the second observation, add the third observation up until we get to the last observation. Minus the mean, we can substitute the value of the mean, divide by n minus one. Our n is eight minus one, and there we have substituted all the values. Then we can do the calculation. 10 minus 16, it's minus six, Square the answer, minus 6 times minus 6 is 36, and you can write the answer down. So I didn't go that route of writing all the answers, so this will have been 36, not 36 squared, but just 36. Let me use a blue a red pen. Christopher is raising a hand. Uh, Christopher, if I can't see your hand, you need to unmute and let me know. Yes? Yeah, good evening. I'm listening. Good evening, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, yes. like I raised my hand long time ago because you were too fast for me. I hope other students maybe are like are with you when you are like speeding up, but I'm struggling to catch up. I know that uh, the formulas will get them on an exam, but if maybe you can yes. slow down, ma'am, please. Okay. We'll slow down. I don't know where you got lost, so I must go back and. I will start from here. Okay, okay maybe just go back. Yes, yes, from there. Thanks. Okay. The range, you order your data from highest to, uh, sorry, from lowest to highest. Your range is your highest value minus your lowest value. So if my highest value is 18, so this data set of mine is huge a little bit. So this must have been there and 12 must be there. This must move there. I think I've stretched it a little bit. This is 13, so this dot ends at 13. So I only have 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, 11, 12, and 13. Those are the points that I have. It's just that my data set here stretched out. So if my highest value is 13 and my lowest value is 1, so it's 13 minus 1, which equals to 12. That's my range. Standard deviation and variance. The variance, sample variance, which is the statistic, we use S squared is equals to the sum of your 
observed observations minus the mean squared divided by n minus 1, which is the statistic. The population variance, which is your parameter, we use sigma squared, which is the sum of your observation minus your mean squared divided by n. You will get this in the exam, the formulas, like you said. The standard deviation is the square root. If I put the square root here, you will see that is the square root of that because then when I have a square root, then square root there and square root here, two will cancel out that square root. I will be left with S on one side and then the square root on the other side. So the standard deviation is the square root of your variance. And this is the formula for your standard deviation, which is your sample, uh, your, your statistic, we use S to represent sample standard deviation. We use sigma to represent the population standard deviation, which is the square root of your population variance. We used an example. We are given the sample data, so therefore it means we're going to use the formula for the sample standard deviation because we are cal uh, calculating the standard deviation. Our sample, there are eight observations within that sample size. To calculate the mean, we've done that. I said I'm not repeating um, the calculation of the mean. Is the sum of all these values divided by how many there are, which is eight. When you calculate the mean, your mean is 16. The formula says the sum of your observations squared. Therefore, it means we need to expand this for every observation, we need to add another observation, another observation. So it means since it's observation I, so it means it's that one, whatever the, the, the observation minus the mean squared plus, we go to the next one. The next observation minus the mean squared plus the next observation and we substitute the values. Then we can substitute the value of our mean. We, I could have skipped that first step and just went into here because I could have said 10 minus the mean, which is 10 minus 16 squared plus 12 minus 16 squared plus 14 minus 16 squared plus, and I add all of them. Divide by n minus 1, which is 8 minus 1. Set, I skipped that one. Uh, the uh, step there, which is 10 minus 16, which is minus 6, minus 6 times minus 6, because it's a squared, or you can use your calculator as well, it's 36. So you will calculate there, 36 plus 12 minus 4, e, sorry, 12 minus 16, I'm already in the answer mode, 12 minus 16 is 4, minus 4, minus 4 squared, is 16 plus 14 minus 16 is 2 minus 2 minus 2 squared is 4 and you continue and do all of them plus 24 minus 16 you get so the dot dot means the other values because I didn't include all the other values so you'll go and find the other values as well so you go and do 15 minus 16 squared and find the answer 17 minus 16 squared uh, 18 minus 15 squared 18 minus 16 squared and then the last one was 24 minus 24 minus 16 which is 8 squared which is 64 so the last one will be 64 squared divide by 8 minus one is seven and when you have all of them so when you add 36 plus 16 plus 4 plus the other numbers plus up until 64 the answer you get is 130 divided by 7. 130 divided by 7 and you take the square root of the answer you get so if i divide 130 130 divided 
by 7, I get 18.57143. And I take the square root of that answer, I get 4.3. And that tells me how far apart my observation are from the mean. So the distance between my observation and the mean is 4.3. And that is the standard deviation. It means all my observations are scattered around the mean. If this is my mean, if this is the line that represents my mean, and my mean is 16 at this, at this point, so if this was an X and Y observation, and this is my X observation, and this is my mean, let's say the mean is 16 at this point. Therefore, these values would have been scattered around somewhere there. That's what it means. So how far are these values from the mean? So Maybe one is there, 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 but the distance roughly is 4.3. That's what the formula says when you calculate the standard deviation. Now, we calculated the standard deviation by taking the square root. If we want to know the variance, the variance will just be 130 divided by 7 which is your sample variance, S squared, will just be 130 divided by 7, which gives us 18.57. And that is your variance. I'm not going to ask you to do any calculation because this formula takes forever to calculate. So on Saturday, we will have lots and lots of exercises that we will do on this so that then you can learn how to calculate the standard deviation. So in order for me to complete the session for today, uh, we're going to do the coefficient of variation. And then at quarter past, I think quarter past eight, we'll take a five minute break, breather, when you do your exercise or activity. And then we will come back at half past, and then we do the last 30 minutes, we look at the quantal, the, the quartiles. Okay. So measures of variation, we also have what we call the coefficient of variation, which is a relative variation measure. And it is always calculated in percentages. It shows your variation relative to the mean. Um, we use, coefficient of variation to compare the variability of two or more products. So let's say you work for an insurance company. I think we used this example earlier when we were doing the introduction. Let's say you work for an insurance company and you work as an investment uh, manager. You look after the portfolio, of uh, investment of people. And you have different kind of uh, clients that you need to satisfy. Some are those who like to take risks and there are those who don't like to take risks because they don't want to lose their money. So you can check the variability of each and every product that you have or you, you, you will like to invest the money of your clients in. The coefficient of variation is one of those uh, calculation or measure of variation that you can use to check the variability of each and every investment product that you want to invest in. And then you can decide in terms of the type of clients that you have, which one you can invest money for the other client and which one you will invest money for those who like to take risks. We use this. And the coefficient of variation is just your standard deviation divided by your sample mean. That gives you your relative variation. Multiply that uh, your standard sample standard deviation divided by your sample mean. Multiply that by 100 because we need to get it to a percentage. Let's look at an example. We have stock A and we know that the average price last year was 50 rent. 
and the standard deviation was five rand. So already they've calculated the average, the mean, and they calculated the standard deviation. We just need to substitute into the formula. We know that our coefficient of variation for is your sample standard deviation divided by the sample mean multiplied by 100. Our st standard deviation is 5 rand. Our mean is 50 rand, so it will be 5 divided by 50 multiplied by 100, then we get 10%. Then we have stock B. The average price last year for stock B was 100 rand. The standard deviation, same as stock A, was 5 rand. Calculating the coefficient of variation, 5 divided by 100, multiplied by 100%, gives us 5%. If you realize both of these stocks have the same standard deviation, but stock B is less variable uh, has the less variable uh, variation, a uh, relative variation than stock A. So it means the distance between the the the, the uh, your values over the year are closer to the average. So it means if I if this is an investment, let's say this is investment A and investment B. Therefore, it means I will invest if I'm that person who doesn't like to lose more money, I will invest in stock B because I know that the fluctuations are not as distant to the average. I will still get my return because it's less variable. Even though the return might be smaller, but at least I will not be losing my money. But if I'm that person who likes taking risks, I can invest in stock A. Because the variation is high. It means sometimes the, uh, the price might be higher, sometimes it might be lower, sometimes it might be high. So I might earn more money sometimes, I might, not, I might lose money sometimes. So that is how you analyze and check whether you, uh, in which stock you will prefer to invest the money of your clients from in case you work in an insurance company. But this does not only apply in the insurance company, it can apply also in any instance, in any environment. You can use coefficient of variation to check the variability of your data. Based on the data that we use for the standard deviation, we can also calculate the coefficient of variation. Remember our data set, our mean was 16 and our standard deviation was 4.3. So we can take our standard deviation of 4.3 divided by the mean of 16 multiplied by 100 and that will give us 26.93 and that tells us the variability of that data or the relative variation of the data that we have and with that remember i said i'm going to give you time to take a break and also do an exercise. Here is your exercise to do. Given the number of people living with ASD, and this is the table with the X values or your sample of your, your values, 100, 4, 206, 85, and 57. Based on that information, which one of the following statement is incorrect? The mean and the median are equal. The mean is less than the median. The, me, the mode is zero. There is no mode. Ignore the none of the above in this instance.
So it means you need to calculate the mean, you need to find the median of this data set. That's A, B. What is the sample standard deviation? So you need to go and calculate the standard deviation of this data set. Remember the standard deviation formula, S is equals to the square root of the sum of your observation minus the mean. You would have calculated the mean when you answer number A. Squared divided by N minus one. So there are one, two, three, four, five, five values. So it should be easy to calculate quick, quick. Then remember the mean, your, your mean, if people have forgotten how to calculate the mean, we're using the sample data. So the mean will be the sum of all observation divided by N. And remember your median, you can find the position by using n plus 1 divided by 2. And since we have odd numbers, so after you have sorted the value, you, do, you don't even have to use the position. <coughs> you can go and find the median, the middle value. The last question that you need to do, <coughs> calculate the coefficient of variation. So remember, coefficient of variation, your standard deviation, you would have calculated your standard deviation there, divide by the mean, multiply by 100%, or multiply by 100. Should be. Let, let me not confuse those who didn't do maths before. Let's not put the 100% and just do 100. Just multiply that by 100 and then you get that answer. You have up until, let's say, 25 past to do all these question answers. You can take a five minute break. Uh, break. You can, in between, you can do your, your exercise now and come back and and take a five minute break later on or you can take break now and then come back and do your exercise but remember we're coming back at 25 past good luck if you have any question i will be here i'm not going anywhere i'm just going to mute myself and you can ask if you need to ask good luck
You have three minutes. Uh, remember, if you have done your answers, you can post them on the chat. Hello, Z. Hello. Just a quick question. For A, should it not read which of the following statements is correct? Mm -mm. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Okay, but then I'm confused. <laughs> Looks like oh, there's so many never incorrect never answers, mind. about three. <laughs> never mind, Stop. never mind, Ba. <laughs> you, you answered yourself? Yes, I answered myself, thank you. Okay, great. Okay, I see there we have Suiso and Hendrik. And Sarah came in as well, and she's on the roll. Ha! Posted twice. Okay, it is 25 past. So let's help those who I can see that I think the majority of you might have struggled to calculate the standard deviation. There is no pressure at this point because on Saturday we will do I will show you on the calculator because at the moment I'm assuming knowledge is or skills is, or a skill is known. Um, <clears throat> so with that, let's take the five minutes to do the answers. I'm going to remove all the I'm going to erase all of them and I'm going to go back so that I answer every question step by step. So question number one, I'm going to do this for you, for everybody. I don't have to ask you. Uh, so you can just compare your answers with what you have. The mean and the median are equal. So you should have already calculated the mean. So yeah, the mean is the sum of all the observations. Somebody is at good. Please mute yourself. The mean is the sum of all observations divided by how many they are. So if I add 108, 4, 20, uh, 206, 85, blah, 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 all of them, I get 500 divided by 5. One, Three, four, five. They are five. So this will be equals to hundred. That is my mean. So I know that my mean is hundred. My median. I need to sort the data from lowest to highest. I did sort it. So it was forty-four, fifty-seven, eighty-five, one hundred eight. And 206. I don't have to use um, the position because I can clearly see here that my median, my median is 85. What is my mode? From the data set that we have, 
if I look at my data set, there is no mode. So this has no mode. So the mode is zero because there's no mode. There is nothing. Coming back to the statement, I'm going to start at the bottom. I said ignore this. There is no mode. Yes, that's true. Mode is zero. Yes, that's true because there is no mode. The mean is less than the median. The mean is less than Mean is less than the median. So our median is 85. The mean is 85 and 100. Huh. That's why it is wrong. Two is wrong. So nobody, yes. only Sarah picked it up. This is wrong. The mean and the median are equal. That is wrong. Yeah. Actually, I think yes, you are right. If also if I go back to the mode, because um, zero can also be a value in terms of the data set. Because if these are a number of people, we can have zero p person. If these are regist uh, registration per day, so if this was a registration per day for people who walked in. So on certain days, we might have no person coming in. So zero can also be another value. So I think in terms of this question, I think people from last year, this come from the tutorial letter of last year. So this should have been also wrong. So I think actually the question was looking for which one is the correct, the correct question. So this would have been the right one. Okay, so that it means that question had an error, possibly. Okay, so going to the next one, which is the standard deviation. We know that our standard deviation formula is the square root of the sum of your observation minus the mean squared divided by n minus 1. Since this is very long, I've already calculated it during the 15 minutes that we had. So I'm going to write a couple of them. I'm not going to write all of them. 44 minus 100 squared plus, I'm just going to write two of them. 57 minus 100 squared plus I'm going to do dot dot so you must include the others and the last one was 206 minus 100 squared divide everything by 5 minus 1 so if you have calculated everything so 44 minus 100 you would have found 1 or oh, squared 44 minus 100 squared will give you 31, 36 plus 18, 49 plus, I can write all of them so that you can just double check your answers, 225 plus 64 plus 11236 divide everything by four. Now, if I would have calculated everything else um, equals, oh, because I ran out of space now. Uh, let's make it here, equals the square root of the top part, if I add all of them, I get, one six five one zero one six five one zero divide by four and if i calculate that i get this four one two seven comma five and i take the square root my answer for the standard deviation is sixty four 
point two five, and that is the standard deviation. So who got it right? Who got one? Fiso got one. Um, Sarah got one, and Etienne got one. So now the last one. was the coefficient of variation. So when you watch the video, you can pause the video and take down the, the answers if you want. So now we move to the next question. It was the coefficient of variation. So we know that coefficient of variation is your standard deviation divided by the mean multiplied by 100. Our standard deviation is 64.25 because we calculated it there. Divide by our mean is 100. Multiply by 100. So 100 and 100 will cancel out. Then the answer will be 64,25%. Even when you calculate on a cal if you do your on your calculator, you will say 64 comma 25 divide by 100 multiply by 100 it will give you 64,25 and let's see Sfiso got it right uh, Sarah didn't answer the question and Ian got it right as well and that's how you do your question of variation your standard deviation your mean your median on Saturday we can work through them again I think the majority of you might have struggled to calculate the square root because some of you have not done maths before. Don't worry, Saturday we will go through the calculator itself. We will do step by step. We will make sure that before we leave the session, everybody knows how to use their calculator to calculate the standard deviation. We will also look at how to use your scientific calculator to calculate the standard deviation because it's easy when you have a scientific calculator we're going to save a lot of time okay that is the discussion for saturday quartiles quartiles are also measures of variation because they also tell us how spread your data